Uh, guys, I don't, I don't mean to alarm anyone. And I know how some may react to this, but what if, what if the Premier League was the real Farmers League all along? A couple of days ago, we witnessed a massacre, a battering. One of the most one-sided, quote-unquote, battles between two so-called rivals. Those who bared witness were leaving before the halfway point, and worst of all, like clockwork, the traveling team made Sir Alex upset again. He's been through enough, okay? He doesn't need this stress anymore. Anyway, this video isn't about those guys. No, this video is about this guy. Erling Haaland is doing things that we've never seen before. I made a video about Erling Haaland potentially joining Man City a week or two before the Blues pulled the trigger. Now, this video was made using purely publicly available information as well as my own two eyes. The conclusion was that nobody should be surprised if he became a hit over at the Etihad, which was not a hot take at all. It was the equivalent of saying water is wet. At the same time, I don't think many people could have predicted this. 14 goals in the league with three assists. Three straight home games, three straight hat-tricks. In this video, I want to briefly talk about what's made Erling Haaland so good these past few weeks and speak on the ramifications of all of this for not only the red side of Manchester, but the rest of the league. Ramifications that are looking more and more devastating with each passing hour. With that being said, whose bright idea was it to let this monster into the Premier League? Yo, what's going on guys? Hope you're doing well. I'm Tunashe and welcome back to Football Iconic. It would mean a lot to me if you hit the red subscribe button, but no pressure, of course. So I don't feel like waiting until Friday to drop this one, so welcome to a rare Tuesday upload. Realistically, I knew that I was gonna have to make a follow-up video on how this guy's been performing in the league, but I honestly thought that that video would come, like, at the end of the season or maybe even at the halfway point, you know? But this goddamn Viking has forced my hand eight games into the campaign. Unbelievable. Before we get into some analysis, I feel we have to first take a look at some of his stats and try and put them into context. First things first, after scoring two goals on his debut, his scoring hasn't let up one bit. A goal per game ratio of 1.75, a number that goes up to 2.2 if you want to tally his overall goal contributions. If he were to continue scoring at this rate, which despite how prolific he is, I'm fairly certain is unlikely, he would finish off the year with 65 goals. At which point, the world will descend into chaos and we will all have to welcome King Erling Braut Holland as our global overlord. On the real though, again, this is unlikely, but it gives a frightening visual of how flaming hot his form has been. Here's a list that's floating around Twitter on the fastest player to reach three Premier League hat-tricks and how many games it took for them to reach that milestone. The gap between first and second really makes you question what's actually possible. Although I do want to point out that Michael Owen did this while he was a teenager, so we really shouldn't forget how much of a beast he was before his knees turned to Play-Doh. For the stats merchants out there, our boy is rocking an XG of 1.14, meaning his actual scoring rate is blowing that out the water. He's also rocking a 40% conversion rate, and he's done all of this with only one penalty. I was actually lucky enough to get Holland in a room, show him all of these stats, and ask him what he thought about them. This was his response. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, that's fair enough, brother. I feel the same way. As always, speaking about stats without the full context is more or less the exact same thing as trying to convince dudes on the internet that Man United is not good again just because they've won a couple of games. It's useless. For example, if you were to look at what he's done so far this year and compare it to what he did last year, and also wave aside the fact that he switched from the Bundesliga to the Premier League, you'd notice that there's been a bit of a drop off in some of his stats. Uh, for example, his team contributions. From key passes to passes completed, there's been a pretty big numerical decline. However, that decline hasn't reflected in assists, which have more or less remained the same. The point I'm trying to make is the stats and the situational context have to complement one another. The truth is that he spends less time on the ball by design. He was brought in to finish. And in the wise words of Rio Ferdinand, This is what he does! Oh this is what he flipping God. does! And it's not like his overall contributions, aside from literally kicking the ball into the net, aren't quality. All you have to do is watch the man. His holder play and ability to fend off defenders is simply fantastic. There are several examples to look through for this. We have him controlling the ball here under pressure before releasing Ilkay Gundogan right before he scored against Bournemouth. We have him blocking off Joel Ward before unleashing a cool finish against Crystal Palace. We have the same here against Forrest. 
And then we have him towering over United's defense to head in his first of the day on Sunday. The last one is pretty scary in the context of Man City as for the first time, essentially since Guardiola arrived, they have a big, strong, reliable attacking focal point for high balls in the box. That's not good. I mean, it's, it's good for Man City, of course. And when you begin to think he's nothing but a bully, he's getting in behind like any other speedster, losing defenders and taking up incredible positions, and then displaying the agility and flexibility of a much smaller man. What the hell is this? How did he get his foot all the way up there? Is this legal? I feel sick. And another thing is that, for me, one of the most impressive parts of this guy's overall game is his sheer determination. A seemingly innocuous moment from the derby paints a compelling picture of this. So unfortunately, I couldn't find a decent clip of it to take screenshots from. But about halfway through the second half, there was a moment where the ball came to him and he took a heavy touch, which led to a drifting out for a goal kick. The dude sprints to the byline to attempt to prevent the goal kick and in turn led up the pressure in United's half. The distance between him and the ball was pretty big. It's pretty much the definition of a lost cause, but the willingness and determination to chase these quote unquote lost causes so late in the game when you're already so far in the lead is pretty much exactly what everyone wants from a pro athlete at that level. And believe it or not, this may seem like an arbitrary example, which I admit it kind of is, but determination like that is pretty rare. The guy was made for this. In addition to all of this, I want to briefly touch on how unbelievably compatible this guy is with Man City. If I didn't know any better, I think that City's team was specifically built to make this guy's best traits shine. This club has essentially spent the last couple of years passing the ball into the penalty area before one of their guys passes the ball into the net. The only problem, which I'm pretty sure Pep is the only one that refers to it as a problem, was that even though they were scoring tons of goals, they were also missing tons of goals. The fact that Kevin De Bruyne alone created almost four goal scoring chances per 90 last season and City scored just under three goals per game the same year says quite a lot. And remember, he might be the best at it, but he isn't their only playmaker. And if City's third goal from the derby tells us anything, it's that De Bruyne and Haaland are already the bestest of mates. I refuse to believe that any other player in the league first and foremost sees this pass and then has the ability to execute it with pinpoint precision. And then, of course, we have Haaland somehow being able to stretch to the ball and finish it off. Absolutely wild. And speaking of the match, I haven't even mentioned that Haaland wasn't even the only one that scored a hat-trick. What is this life? The improvement of Phil Foden over the past two years or so has been astronomical, to say the least. I remember a couple of years ago when Pep Guardiola came out and said that Foden was the most talented player he had ever seen. I mean, we all know that that was some A-grade cap, right? Listen, at the end of the day, he's the Man City boss and he has to find a way to motivate his players, right? Especially the younger ones. However, you absolutely cannot deny that the guy is fantastic. He's a, he's a clear winner of the Sancho vs Foden debate that I remember was going on probably still is going on. I do plan on doing a longer, more detailed video on Man City and everything that Pep Guardiola has done since he arrived in 2016. Uh, however, I think at the very least, I'll give that one until Christmas uh, to do a longer deep dive. But if you are not a Man City fan and you want a quick summary of what that video is going to entail from the perspective of every other team in the league, here's a preview. It's not looking good, Bev. It's not looking good. However, until then, what does this mean for the rest of the league? Manchester United got embarrassed in this game, especially in the first half. It was pretty much boys versus men. But emotions and jokes aside, you can't really deny that the improvement under Ten Hag has looked tentatively promising. Up until this game, all the new signings have looked pretty good for the most part. It's a shame that they had to be so brutally exposed by, along with PSG and Barca, one of the most informed teams on the planet. However, as a Man United fan, I'm willing to trust the process. For the fifth time in nine years. But back to Holland, My brothers in Christ, I don't know what we're going to do about this guy, man. He can't be human. The league is in for some dark days, boys. Strap in, because it's about to be a bumpy ride. Unless, of course. Unless, unless you're this guy. Having said all of this, perhaps EPL fans can rejoice knowing that the suffering may not last for years on end. Last week, former City player and the father of Erling Haaland, Alf Inge Haaland, came out and said this. I think Erling wants to test out his abilities in every league. Then he can stay in every league for three to four years maximum. He could have two and a half years in Germany, two and a half in England, and then in Spain, Italy, and France, right? We do not know if it will be like that. 
but I think he would like to test his abilities in the big leagues. Personally, I am fully on board with this quote. Actually, you know what, I'll even go a step further. I think he's already proven he's a Premier League legend. It's time to go. And there we have it. What do you guys all think about Erling Haaland? And also, what do you think about this format of video? A kind of, but not really reaction video with a little bit of detail sprinkled in? I don't know what to call it. Uh, feel free to follow me on all the socials. Links are in the description. And that's all for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're having a great day. Cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.